Well, hello, I'm Mike Festiva. Welcome back. In this video, we got a nice, simple DIY project. It's a portable metal cutting bandsaw. Built a little tabletop for it. Commonly, you can buy these kits. Swag makes them. If you don't want to do a DIY project, there'll be links below if you find the tools useful. But this one I built here, a lot of times they either sit on top of your little workbench and you can run your portable saw with it, or you can get some that clamp into a vise and they're a little more cheap. That kind of appealed to me is just be able to clamp in a vise, use it for that. I actually wanted to modify this one even more and make it so it actually clamps onto the side of my welding table. Just so you're cutting simple little stuff, you can cut some stuff and get back to welding. Basically, you don't need much for it. Some scraps of metal, we'll get into more material towards the end of the video. A drill, a metal cutting bandsaw, of course, a welder, it's an angle grinder. I'm gonna take the shortcut route. I just picked up a plasma just recently. I did a little review on that as well, and it cuts metal really well. So uh, let's get in the video. So here I'm just cutting up some quarter inch random plate that I had salvaged around my shop. If you don't have anything like this, don't worry. I think some flat plate and some angle iron would do completely fine. Uh, just think outside the box. Whatever scrap you have, I'm sure you can build a table like this as well. So this 50 amp plasma torch I just picked up recently on Amazon. I did a review, there'll be a link below in the description for that. But I've been really impressed how well this thing's actually been working so far. It's a pretty good machine for barely over 200 bucks. So here I'm just looking over the saw to see what it's going to take to get this plate to make up half the table. And I'm noticing that the contours of the saw to get this a nest closer, I'm going to have to do a little bit more trimming. So a little backstory on this bandsaw tabletop project here. I've actually been looking at them for a little while now, but I don't really need any more tools, so I keep kind of talking myself out of it. But I was at Harbor Freight the other day looking through their little return items where everything's heavily discounted and I found this Bauer bandsaw with one dull blade and uh, another brand new one in the box. Everything complete on their bargain return shelf for about 75 bucks. So once I saw that I decided, all right, it's time to pick this up and get on with this project. Well, all right, now that I got those two, <coughs> uh, well, I mean four holes drilled, <laughs> I can mount that plate and it uh, actually fits perfect. So here I'm just marking out some spots I want to trim next time I take this plate off of the bandsaw. And I went for the two separate sections and left a channel down the center to take the blade on and off. Um, I think it'd probably just be just as easy or easier to just start off with a flat plate of steel, cut a notch down with an angle grinder or the bandsaw. And uh, verdict's still out if I actually want to widen the trough where the blade goes or not. Uh, I think that's going to be one of those things. The more I use it, the more I'll know if I want to widen it or just keep it narrow. So if you're kind of newer to welding, uh, I could not stress enough to you how important it is to clamp your metal down to keep it from warping and not working over one area too much with heat. Try to move around a little bit to dissipate the heat, even let your parts cool off. Here I have a nice welding table I can actually put these clamps in, but if you didn't have something like this, some uh, C-clamps and some heavy duty angle iron across your two plates would actually be pretty adequate. Just uh, try not to put too much heat into your workpiece or you will definitely get some warping.
So here I'm just cleaning up the extra scraps of metal, those uh, sharp edges and tips that just didn't need to be on here anymore. This is the side that's actually gonna go in and get clamped into a vise if I'm using it on the vise. I've also modified it later so I can fit it on my welding table. One other thing is uh, bevel all your edges. Uh, it's nothing worse than hitting your hand on a super sharp piece of metal and just cutting it wide open. So uh, if you can, bevel all your edges and smooth it out. It doesn't only uh, make it look nicer, it actually is a little safer for you to be around. And here I'm actually changing out the hardware. I think it was M5 originally, 15 millimeters long, and I got some 20 millimeter hardware, and it was also machine head screws so I could countersink them. So the table is basically ready to be clamped in the vise and hold the bandsaw, but I want to take it one step further by clamping that uh, square on top to determine the height I want it to be off my welding table. I'm going to be going through here scribing these back holes so I can get these in line pretty well. And I'm going to cut some studs and plug weld them to the back side of this plate. And uh, you might get some tips out of this, so uh, enjoy the rest of the part of this video. So once I determine where the holes need to be, I'm using a step bit to bore them out a lot larger. Now this is still undersized than the plugs. If I actually wanted this to be very sturdy, I would have actually oversized them and dropped the plugs through the plate. But because I'm only holding about 40 pounds worth of metal here, it's not too crucial. What was more crucial to me was having a nice alignment with this uh, 5 8 diameter rod so it didn't bind when you try to slide it in and out of the table. Yes, clamps, clamps, and more clamps. Uh, even this plug is actually clamped in place before I welded it. Table is clamped to the welding table completely because uh, alignment, like I said, is crucial at this point. You can have something move just the slightest bit and it doesn't either pull out of the table very well or it's just a problem. Now we're just cleaning up this uh, old rust off this piece to make it look a little bit more uh, jazzed up and shiny. As I was cleaning the rust off this plate, I realized the original 90 degree bends were not true, so I corrected that by welding three little buttons of weld on the back side of this mini table, and I was able to use the angle grinder and grind it down until I got it nice and level. Whoa, whoa, hold on safety officer, before you go wild in this comment section, hear me out. I got a reason why I'm zip tying the trigger down. I actually ordered a small foot switch from Amazon. At some point I wouldn't mind building a little box or guard around it so you can't bump it momentarily. So this little bandsaw is actually working pretty good. The idea is I'm actually not going to have it directly in front of my welding table like this. This is just to finish up the video and try it out, the test cuts. I actually have to do a little rearrange in my shop and I plan to mount it to the side of my welding table instead. So it's a little too early to tell if I actually want to add about an eighth inch of clearance on each side of the blade there to allow chunks of metal and small scrap to pass through the bottom of the table. But I haven't used enough yet to figure that out. Uh, time will tell on that one. Well, there it is. Hope you enjoyed the video. Go give you guys some little simple specs on here. I'm not going to give you full dimensions on this because, of course, you know, I was just working with salvage scrap I had. You'll be doing the same. But give you a ballpark of the table size on the one I built. It's 8 inches wide by 10 inches deep. 
that worked for me with the salvage material I had. This was something we dug up at a fabrication shop is in their out pile. It's cord wrench. Someone bent it. it. used to be a big slab. Someone bent it on a brake improperly and it didn't work for their job. So we salvaged it. Down here I cut a part out on my CNC table for my brother. He was making a big swing away tire carrier for his 4x4 camper. So we had to make a tire mount plate. And then all these circles up here I cut some quarter inch spacers for my Suzuki Carry 4x4 build so I could mount some different rims on it. Just had this thing sitting around here. I didn't want to quite check it out there's still a lot of usable metal on here so of course we cut the other side off and made this table out of it still some salvage to be done on the other side of this so I'm sure we'll use it down the road at something else uh, that's quarter inch it's going to be a little harder for you to cut a lot of quarter inch if you're actually using an angle grinder uh, so you might want to consider making your table out of 3 16 you could probably get away with something thinner like this this eighth inch but keep in mind, I didn't have to do any gussets under mine. It's super sturdy because that's quarter inch on there. But if you actually go with something thin like eighth inch, you will probably have to run some gussets under the sides from where the sides meet the table just to strengthen it up. So if you mount it in the vise, you don't get a bunch of movement and uh, flexing on the plate. So bear in mind, if you're working with thinner material, you have to gusset it more. Another thing to consider, if you do a two-piece table like I did where the slot was already here because I left the plates separated a little bit for the blade. If you do a two-piece like that, put a few spots on each side. Don't do one whole weld down one side of the, the plate or you'll end up with the crown tabletop. It just uh, heat warps things. So just take your time, add a few spots on each side, do a little inch here, inch there, go to the other side, do the same. And uh, just kind of dissipate your heat throughout your plate, front and back, so you don't end up with a bowed tabletop. One other thing to mention, that little electric pedal I got for this thing, it was a good idea, but it's cheap. It feels like something you would actually get out of like a Power Wheels, like a kid toy. It's terribly cheap. So I'm going to fish around on Amazon, try to find something better. There'll be a link to that pedal below. I'll say very cheap pedal. And if I can find a slightly better one, I'll put a link down there for that as well. Um, I don't know if I have anything else to add to it. Oh, you know, if you like this build, you like this idea, but you don't feel like building a tabletop, Swag actually offers these. They make vice-mounted ones and make tabletop ones that fit a wide range of saws. So if you have a, whatever brand saw you have, will fit in those tables. So check those out if you're interested. If you're interested in also that plasma torch, I did a review, kind of more of like a buyer's guide if you're actually buying maybe not even just that machine, but it works pretty dang well as you saw in the video. And uh, check out that video, it's got a lot of helpful tips. I'll put a link below in the description as well. All right, until next time, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below. If you're not subscribed, consider subscribing. We do a lot of DIY projects and fabrication builds on this channel. So until next time, take care, bye.